asked me uh, to preach on May 13th, I thought, um, wait a second, that's Mother's Day. And I thought, ah, not so convenient, because I actually had a completely totally different message that I was actually preparing for. And I thought, mm -hmm, Mother's Day. So you probably think I'm, just, uh, I'm probably expected to talk about mothers, right? How they're extra extraordinary, they're mighty warriors, they are sacrificing themselves for their families and children, constantly living on a battlefield. And the Bible says, honor your father and mother so you will have a long life. And so you probably think I'm going to talk about why you should listen to your mother. It's a good thing. But, you know, once a preacher came to our church, so he was talking about uh, parents and mothers in particular, and I was listening. I was, yes. And, but I can't really remember what he said. It didn't really stick to my mind. So, this morning, I'm not going to preach about mothers. No, I'm not. And I think another thing is, you know, I absolutely believe, unless you are married and you have children or adopted children or spiritual children, you will really not understand what a mother is or fully grasp it. Because I couldn't at that time. When I heard that message, I couldn't. So, for this reason too, I'm not going to preach about mothers. Then what? That's the same question I asked God to. Then what? Then what? Then what? I really didn't know. Because, I, like I said, I had something else. And then I hear God say, Okay, I'm just supposed to talk about me? And I thought, yes. But... God the Father on Mother's Day? It doesn't kind of make sense to me. And I was like, God, what are you trying to tell? What am I supposed to talk about then? Here the problem was, I know God the Father. God the Father. Right? And so when I was praying, I was like, what do you mean? Genesis 1.27 popped in my head. And I know that God put that thought in my head. It says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Now, male and female, he created in his image. So, I was like, in his image, he created male and female. Male and female. I went and looked in the mirror, and I thought, okay... I never actually thought about it. God, the Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Shepherd, the Father, our Heavenly Father. Did you ever look in the mirror, all the women, and ask yourself, what part of me resembles me, God? What part of me, as a woman? I guess, you guys, it's easier. You look in the mirror and say, God, the Father, I'm a guy. That's good, but the Bible said he created man and woman in his image. So where am I? Maybe he's the guy. So I looked in the mirror and I thought, God, I don't get it. What part of me actually resembles you? And God gave me this thought, like I heard, literally heard, Mother Heart of God. You know, I heard and I had like teachings about the father heart of God, but the mother heart of God, I honestly didn't hear about it. So for me, it was like, okay, go research. What is it? Read books. So I started to dig and I started to read books. And it was one day, it was my kids were sleeping, it was almost 12, so that's my quiet, my, my peace time. So I was reading and I couldn't stop reading. It was so interesting, but the really powerful thing that happened was, while I was reading, mm -hmm. it was like, like a warm wave. If you're on a beach on Hawaii, the warm wave, you're body surfing, and this water splashes over you. That's kind of something like that. That's what I felt. I'm like, whoa, what is this? It was like someone put a warm, soft blanket around me. It was so powerful, 
And then you know what I thought when I was reading? Mm -hmm. um, the last two weeks ago, on a Saturday, the last um, fasting prayer. And so during that fasting prayer, a lot of people said the one thing that was so the people could grasp, but there was something that God was revealing was the compassion and God as a comforter. There was something God was telling to someone. And I felt God is not done telling us. Mm -hmm. I felt God has something to tell you this morning. Mm -hmm. The another side of God that you probably didn't see. Please, bow your heads and let's pray for some man. Father God, I give this service into your hands, Father. I cover scope with the blood of Jesus. Father God, please make our hearts calm and quiet before you. Father, I pray that you will show us to guys this morning the mother heart of God, Father. Father God, help us to grasp it. Father God, I pray that you will become like a wave over us, Father. I pray that you will put a soft, warm blanket around us, Father. Help us that we will be touched, our lives will be touched, and Father, transformed, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this morning, I will talk about the mother heart of God. See, God is what we know as our Heavenly Father. Right? But... What is the mother's side? He loves us with the maternal characteristics. There's this mother's love. See, when I was digging into the books, one of the most important word in the Bible about the mother heart of God is the word mercy. The word mercy comes from the Hebrew word rahim, and it means womb-like. Okay, for you guys, like guys, and for the girls, a womb, a woman has a womb, not the men. It's the uterus, and when a woman gets pregnant, woman, you know, the baby, the the newborn baby, the fetus will grow in the womb. The womb expands during the pregnancy to hold that growing baby. A womb is protective and nurturing until the baby is delivered, and the Bible. It repeatedly says again and again, okay, the mercy of God is like womb-like. And mercy, that word mercy, comes 250 times in the Bible. The deepest desire of God is to love us, I think this morning, with an unending love. Like a devoted mother, when she has this baby, she's not going to give it up. You know, she's going to hold it, always shelter it, protect it. And the deepest desire of God is to create, number one, new life. He wants to protect his children from injuries. He wants to nurture them. And he wants them to mature, grow up, and give fruit. He wants to be successful, be Bringing food, doing something. Isaiah 46, 3 to 4 says, Listen to me. You have been born by me from birth and have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I will be the same. And even to your growing years, I will bear you. I have done it and I will carry you. And I will bear you and I will deliver you. So it talks about, again, womb. The interesting thing is, you're like, okay, great. The interesting thing is, when Isaiah was writing it, the nations around Israel, okay, they had man-made gods. And their man-made gods, all of them were militant, powerful. You know, they were like anger, and you could see like a macho god. This one, you know, this side, womb-like, a woman, God, you know, like this maternal side is completely new. That was not common. Isaiah 49, 15 to 16 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of a womb? A couple of years ago, there was a YouTube video, viral YouTube video. I don't know if you saw it. I didn't see it completely. It was a mother 
hitting her newborn, like a, a couple old bit, months baby, I don't know, maybe four or five months old, she was hitting it constantly, throwing it onto the wall, and it was crying, and then she would beat it, she'd take the pillow and like beat it and beat it again and again. And I was thinking, she was beating, who was taking that damn video? That person who took the video was watching it and didn't do anything. It went viral on YouTube, on Facebook, you can see that one. And I couldn't watch it. After a while, I couldn't watch it. It was too heartbreaking. This child was crying constantly. Like, ah, it was really hard to watch that. And the Bible says, even these won't forget yet. Even the mothers can forget. See, they're out there. They're not always perfect mothers. They are bad mothers. And but God said, yet I will not forget you. See, I, God, have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. See, this is what God says. He says, no, that no love on this earth you can compare with the love of a mother, actually. So they are bad mothers. But God says, even if they fail, look, I love you. When was the last time you heard your mom say, I love you? I'm proud of you. Maybe there is someone who earned, yearns, you know, but you don't admit it to the crowd. You know, you don't need that. You're strong enough. But God is saying, you know, I love you. If you want to hear it or not, if you think you deserve it or not, God is saying this morning, I love you so much. He loves you with the kind heart of a father and a merciful mother. But what does actually mercy mean? Over emotional? Too mushy? Or you can get away with anything you do? Or is this a sign of weakness? When God holds back the punishment you actually deserve, when he holds it back, that's called mercy. What does it mean to you and me? What does it mean this morning when we say, God is merciful, he wants to love you, embrace you, and hold you? The thing is, I, when I was pondering over this verse, it was like, a question popped in my head. How many of you came to church, okay, because your parents, because your parents came first, because they became Christians and came to church, and then you came. How many of you? Can you please raise your hand? How many of you, or you're born into this church? How many of you came to church? Uh, uh, raise your hand. You came to church because of your parents? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The question this morning is, okay, have you ever, they made a decision, but have you made that decision to be a Christian? Have you made that for you? Do you know this is absolutely the right way? Jesus among so many other gods. Why Jesus? Because the Bible says so. That's good. Yes. But how do you know the Bible is... There are so many other like holy scriptures. So how do you know the Bible is true? Have you ever really, you know, be convinced... Have you ever really made that decision, you know, because you searched and you found Jesus and then you say, I'm following Jesus because I'm absolutely convinced. The Bible said, search and you will find, knock and it will be open. This morning is an invitation to you. Don't just come to church because your parents come or somebody you know comes. This morning I want to encourage you, search. Really ask, it's not a bad thing. Oh, how can I ask, you know, question God? No, God wants you to ask questions. Because otherwise you will be coming to church and you will be like, you know, we come worship, you do good things, but that's not what God wants. He wants a relationship. He wants to be your father. He wants to be your mother. He wants an intimate relationship. He wants you to spend time with him. But that's only possible if you make that decision. If you say, you know, I was asking my question. I was like, why not Buddhism? Why not Hinduism? Why not Mormonism? You know, I asked myself, why? Maybe that's right. Krishna is right. How? 
See, I'm convinced when you search, when you search, you will not. Because people say, oh, don't say that, you know, they might go, they, they might search and find something else. No, I'm absolutely convinced. If you say this is the one thing, God, if there's a living God out there and I want to find you, I'm absolutely 100% sure you will only find Jesus as the one living God. You will not find any other. So search for it. But okay, you say, you know, I'm coming to church and I made that decision. I'm coming to church. I'm a Christian because I made that decision. But my question this morning to you is, you know, but is there maybe a distance between you and God this morning? When you think, you know, oh, you know, I actually should have read the Bible more. I should have actually prayed more. I should have gone to the youth meetings. You know, I should have. You know, Johnny asked me to worship, but I didn't. And then you feel something, you know, like a distance with God. Because you feel like I didn't do things that God asked me to do. So you think, Father God, punishment, strict, Ten Commandments. You know, and you feel like there's a distance. You don't know how to approach Him. But God is saying, you know, I am merciful. I'm not condemning you. See, you should read. Yes, that's true. You should pray more. Yes, that's true. But you know what? I'm not condemning you. I'm giving you another chance. There's another day tomorrow. And I want you to come because I love you. I love you. The mother heart of God. He wants to carry you. He wants you to grow. He wants to mature. And he wants to bear fruit. He wants you to go out and do something significant. And he's going to be on your side. Anne Lamott is a New York, a New York Times best-selling author, and she was raised by atheistic parents. And so she gets into drug, alcohol as a teenager, heading full speed into the path of sexual relationships, abortion. And as an alcoholic, she wasn't even interested in Jesus. But one late night, she was unable to sleep she had this, she was full drugged and full of alcohol and she had this psychosis, she couldn't sleep, fits, whatever, you, could, what, you get the future, she couldn't sleep. And during those hours, not accepted Christ, she felt as someone was with her, like a mother's love. Someone was stroking her forehead. Someone was talking for us, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And that's when she decided to go to a church. And she went to the one of the little, smallest church in the poorest communities of California. And there she found Jesus. And the thing she said is, without that little church, she would have not survived the later years of alcohol and drug. There she found compassion. There in that church she felt compassion. Psalm 103, 8 says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He's not going to leave your side. Whatever you're going through in your life right now, I don't know. I don't know what pain it is. But I'm absolutely convinced this morning, I'm talking to someone this morning. Because I had completely other message and God directed me to speak and I think the worship was speaking directly and I'm absolutely convinced there's someone who needs to hear this. I don't know what pain you're going through, okay? I'm not sure if you're in a relationship that you should not be in because you're like, oh, you're saying that in church. Yes, I'm saying that in church. I've been counseling young people for a long time and then I have young people come to me, they're in church and they are in a relationship with a Hindu or whatever relationship. So maybe you are in a relationship that you are not supposed to be in. Or you have a broken heart because of it. Or you have some disappointment. There's something that you are dealing with this morning. And God is saying unconditional love. Compassion. Compassion. And maybe you think, hey lady, you don't know what I did. Yes, I don't. Or you say, you know, or you don't know what I'm capable of doing. That's what I heard once. 
See, often you come to church and you put a mask on. So, yes, you're true. I don't know. But God looks behind that mask. He knows everything about you. And still, he says this morning, I love you. I love you with a compassionate love. I'm crazy about you. And you think, what about me? Yes, about you. Because when he created you, he made you in his image. You, there's something about you that resembles God. When you look in the mirror, he says, you're perfect. You see all the failures, you see the brokenness, you see the pain, you see everything you did wrong, the relationships you were in. But God is saying to you this morning, I see the person I created you to be. I know the capacity do you have. I know what you can do with your life. And I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be right by your side like a mother. A mom never gives up her children. No, they... I know stories where children, guys ran away from home, right? And I know like fathers, you know, fathers, they get angry, they, they're upset and angry, but the moms, they always hold on. Even though that's an absolute failure, she will, she will see the good. You no, know, he will come around, she will protect them. And God says, I will protect you. I still love you. Every day is a second chance. Deuteronomy 32, 11 to 13 says, Like an eagle that stirs up her nest, hovers over young, spreads out her wings, takes them and carries them as she flies. What does it have to do with compassion? Scientists have found out that the mother eagle incubates his egg and hunts for food to feed the little eaglets. And when the little eaglets are fearful, leaving the nest, she's right beside them. And they do their first wings wrap, they flap, and when they're too tired to fly alone, she sweeps under them, and they fall on her wings, and she carries the young eaglets to the nest. And she does it over and over again until they start flying. And this is the picture God is giving you this morning. See, maybe you fall. Maybe you fall, maybe you have fallen. Maybe you did something you shouldn't do. Maybe you said something you shouldn't say. We fall, we all fall. But God is saying today, no, I'm not pointing at you. I'm right beside you. I'm underneath you. You can never, you can never fall deeper than God's hands. When you think you've fallen low, your life cannot be more miserable than this, God says no. You're actually in my hands. You know, during my mission, mission outreach, I went to Thailand. And so one of the tasks we had was help a family build a home. And that was so exciting. And so while we were building, they had a tent put up where they had all their belongings. They stayed until the house would be finished. And they had a hen with a lot of chicks. Now, if you know me, I like everything small and cuddly and cute. So I went chasing them. My friends thought I was crazy because I was the team leader. Didn't really look like a leader because I was still chasing those little chicks. I wanted to catch one and see how fluffy it was. So I was chasing it. And they all ran, I think more than 10, they all ran under the mother hen and started to hide under her wings. I was watching them, so I was still trying to catch one. And after a while, I couldn't see any. And I'm like, okay, I mean, more than 10. I was like, the hen was not a thick, big hen. It was just a regular sized hen. So I should be seeing some little fluffy things under there. No, I couldn't. I couldn't see one little hen. So I turned to my friend and said, I can't see any hens. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what's the point? And I said, like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Man, I get it. And she's like, wow. And she's like, I said, look, I can't see them. You know, Psalm 91. How it says how God, you know, spread his feathers and the chicks hide under the wings. You cannot see one little chick. 
What is it? What I'm trying to say is, see, it put in my head. When I stand up in the morning and I say, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus and I'm going under your protection. And I thought, whoa, you know what? Satan is not able to see me because the mother hen, God, is all over me. I'm not visible. These little chicks were invisible and I became invisible. Can I have two people? Because you guys sit so conveniently for me. And I was like, do I do this? Do I don't do this? Are they going to come if I ask? <laughs> so I was like, because of time, my husband was like, I'm not sure if you should do it. But you sit so conveniently. Can I ask you to come for a second? <laughs> Thank you. So volunteering for you. Yay! Everybody give a hand for that. Okay, come on. Come on. Who's taller? Yeah, so, so Bernice, can you stand from me? Okay, so. And... Joshua, try to attack me. Try, try to get me, okay? Okay, and she will give me my head, my head, okay? Can, can you try to just poke me? Try to poke me. Try to poke me. <laughs> 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 thank you, guys. Thank you. I think you get it now. I think you got it. Did someone hurt you? Or did someone try to hurt you? Did someone say something mean to you? Did someone betray you? See, I'm, what I'm saying is, if you take God's protection over you, if you put yourself under God's protection, if someone wants to hurt you, they are going to hurt God. If someone says something absolutely nasty to you, they're saying the nasty things to God. If someone betrays you, they're actually betraying God. It shouldn't hit, it won't hurt you that much. Go under the protection of God. See, you don't need to plot the revenge. I deeply hurt. Someone had to get back to that person. See, God is going to be the judge. He's going to be fair. And you are not alone. You are hidden. Then I thought, stay hidden. Because if you come under that God's protection, you're visible for attacks. So every morning, get under protection of God. See, even there is actually visible, like there are two stories. One from my friend uh, said, during World War II, her grand his grandmother, they were escaping the Nazis. And she said, so all their belongings was on a wagon. And uh, her grandmother and her family was on the, were on the wagon and so we're, they were trying to escape but when they came to a point there were all soldiers, militants all around that area there was no way going back but there was also no way going forward and so he said grandmother and the family said okay there's no other way so we're going to pray they prayed and said God we will go directly in front of the soldiers, but please hide us, make us invisible to their eyes. They set off the wagon when literally, literally in front of the soldiers. And he said, her grandma will always say, they couldn't see them. They didn't, they were talking. There was a wagon, horse wagon full of stuff and people, but they couldn't see them. And I think that is like how literally God protect, can protect you. One day, a son of a rich man demands his father to give him his inheritance. Then he took that money and moves far away to another country. He was busy partying, drinking, hanging out with people, his, the so-called friends. He doesn't care of the pain he caused his father. But the father, he holds no anger, no thought of punishment. But the young man doesn't think of his father. Then a famine happens. He's left alone, homeless, hungry, hurting, thinks of home, and he's on his way. In the far distance, the father sees it. He, he the father, runs to the son. Hugs him, kisses him, 
and says, quickly, bring a rope. The father doesn't want anybody to see the dirty clothes, the situation the son has been in, the pain he went through. Instead, he put that rope around him and protects his son, his dignity. This is your story, this is my story. See, it says, God, the Father, He's the one who is waiting. Mom said like that. I told her some, I heard of the story when the son left home. And the father was, of course, he was sad and angry and, you know, but he went, after a while, he went busy. But the mom, she was the one who was waiting. My son will come back. My son will come back. My son will come back. She was the one waiting while the son was busy partying and drinking. So maybe this morning there's someone of you, you know, you're busy with your life. You know, you think, I'm not an alcoholic. One glass doesn't mean anything. You know, she's a nice girl. You know, whatever you take, whatever you have. One more thing, I'm young. But God is waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. Wherever you are, God is waiting for you. And He will keep on waiting for you until you return. He says, return, return, return. I don't know who's there this morning. God is saying, I'm waiting for you to return. I'm not condemn There's no condemnation. I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to condemn you for what you have done or said. I just want you to come home. You know, God is this, this love. I don't know if you can feel it this morning. God is saying, I love you so much. I'm not going to condemn you for what you have done. I'm not. I'm just waiting for you. See, he says, I'm waiting for you with the white robe of the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to put it around you. No one is going to see what you have been through. No one is going to see your pain and the brokenness. I will give you the dignity. You know, no one is going to see how it's your life inside of you. Maybe you're wearing a mask. But God is saying, I see it. I see you. I see your inside. And I say, I'm going to put that robe over you. I'm going to give you dignity. You can go head high in this church. You can go head high in the world, in your university, before your friends. You can go head high. Please return to me. See, the good news is this morning, He redeems us. He doesn't condemn us. He forgives us. He protects us. See, oh, He is our comforter. The Holy Spirit, God, Jesus said, and I will give you, the, I will send you the comforter. The Holy Spirit, He's the comforter. Like a mom, like a mother. See, he's going to say, it's going to be okay. You are going to be okay. And he's going to say, you are made in my image. You are perfect. And this morning, the mother heart of God is full of mercy, protective, and womb-like. His endless compassion. He carries us, gathers us, protects us like a hand gathers a chick. And it's the Holy Spirit is our comforter. You're comforted. When you say, God, i absolutely sure you will feel it. I was reading a book and about the mother heart of God and I felt it. And I'm absolutely sure when you go home, you kneel before wherever you are, kneel in your car, kneel in your room, wherever you are, and you cry out and say, Father, I'm, I want to come home. I don't know how. I want to. Then I can show you. He will put this robe, this blanket of love, righteousness around you. You will feel it. You will feel love. And he's saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. And you feel that protection. Please, let us stand up. Father God, I know 
Mary and speaking to us, Father. Father, you are a kind-hearted Father, but you also are the merciful Mother. Father, you're not the, you are all-powerful, the Creator, the strength and all power. But at the same time, Father, there is this sign. When I look into the mirror, I can see for the first time what resembles me, the mother heart. Father, this softness, this, this love and compassion. When we see a child fallen, how our heart aches. Father, that's how your heart aches when we fall. Father God, when we see a little child and go, wow. And that's how you look at us and say, yes, this precious child. Father, heart, please help us to understand the mother heart of you, Father. Father God, I pray that I know for sure you, you were speaking to someone or lots of people this morning, Father. And I pray that this message will go deep into their hearts. Convict them, Father. I pray that they can run back. It doesn't matter where they are, what situation they are in, in what pain they are. I'm praying, Father God, please help them to come back. Holy Spirit, help them to come back. Father God, I pray that you will put your arms around them, that you will hug them, and that you will love them. And I want, again, Father, I want them to hear how you say, I love you. I love you. Father God, I pray that they can feel it, they can hear it in their ears. They will take it for their hearts, Father. Father God, I pray, whoever that this is, that they know they are loved by you, that you are loving God, not condemnation, no punishment that you already took that punishment on the cross. Father God, please help them to understand that you are loving and waiting. Father God, as they go home, I pray that you will be with them, Father, and lead them through this process of coming home. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.